everybody, and welcome to the Upkeep for Monday, January 13th, 2020. That's right, it's all of the magic news you need in 10 minutes or less. A big bombshell for modern today with the banned and restricted update. That's right, not only is number one culprit Oko Thief of Crowns gone. Number one culprit. Get in the band. Out of here. But also, to many people's surprise, I am sure, Fox Opal. Wow, a staple of modern yes. for so, so, so long. It's kind of been in this hilarious place for me where I think so many people have been saying for a long time Vox Opal should get a ban. Yeah. But it always kind of had that like attitude about it like it should but it never will. It's just too cool. You can't touch me. I'm Vox Opal. Exactly. And Wizards of the Coast was like, do you know what? Get out of here. Get out of our modern format. And not only Oko, Mox Opal, but a third band, Mycosynth Lattice. That's right. This one was kind of looking ahead. They were saying what could potentially really become a problem in modern once we get rid of Oko and Mox Opal. And they said, well, do you know what, Tron? You don't need access to this. We're going to get rid of Mycosynth Lattice. Yes. So here's some data behind these decisions. Wizard said decks using Urza, which is where you'll find Oko, where you'll find Mox Opal, had the most five O's on MTGO and a 55% non-mirror win rate and winning matchup versus nine out of the 10 other most popular decks. Dang. Which is Oof. really, really strong. That is just absurd. Um, Oko had become the most played card in competitive modern with an inclusion rate approaching 40%. That is absurd. That's so many decks. That's nearly half. So we were also expecting uh, some Pioneer bans announcements today, uh, but no bans from Wizards in Pioneer. They say they're happy where the format is right now, and they're going to change so bans now sync up with banned and restricted announcements for their other formats. And that means we'll hear about Pioneer bans every six months or so, or excuse me, every six weeks or so, or on an as-needed basis. Yes, they say they are keeping an eye on the new Heliod plus Walking Ballista combo. Ooh, so in Pioneer, that could that could get the old ban, but not yet. Not yes. yet. Um, Theros Beyond Death pre-releases this weekend. Yay, I'm so excited. <laughs> yes, uh, of course, the full preview is out now, so you can go take a look at it. We prefer using Scryfall because you can sort so many different ways. Yes, yeah, excellent website. Yes, so get in there, know what's good, know what tricks there are in the format, know what removal you need to be wary of. Yes, and you can keep an eye out for our Judge Rob episode of Good Luck High Five, which will be dropping tomorrow or Tuesday before the pre-release, depending on when you listen to this. If you want in, uh, some updates on card interactions and new mechanics or uh, individual listener questions about tricky stuff that might come up during your pre-release. That's right. If you also want to get ahead of the curve even more you can watch the pre pre-release uh that loading ready run hosted this past Yay. weekend the footage of that is over on their youtube footage makes it sound like it was like a documentary crew in there yeah. like <laughs> watching them doing this pre pre-release no they were broadcasting <laughs> it on twitch and you can find it now on youtube so modern was actually the name of the game this past weekend yeah. a lot two big tournaments we're going to start off with magic fest austin which is modern and also the home of the team series final which happened on Sunday. Let's talk about Modern first. Yes. So the winner of the tournament was Chris Candreva playing Titan Field, which nice. is actually a newer deck, yep. which uses Field of the Dead and a bunch of cards that ramp specifically by getting you more lands to yep. trigger your Field of the Dead, making lots of zombies, of course. It also ran Oko because what doesn't these days, it won't anymore. Uh, but yeah. yeah, really cool to see that deck uh, take the whole tournament down. You might have also heard it called Simic Titan in the last couple of weeks uh, because because, as you mentioned, it does play Oko. Yep. Because everything was Simic or Sultai these last few why weeks. Why not? Oh, buddy. Let's take a look at the metagame breakdown yes. from Austin. So if you combine all of the Urza decks together, they were the most represented. It was the deck to beat at the tournament, now losing two big tools in yep. Mox Opal and Oko. Uh, followed by Death's Shadow decks, Eldrazi Tron, Regular Tron, Burn, and then we found Titan Field with 35 players on that deck in the tournament. Wow. All right. What a what a change is coming to modern. I know it's gonna be with these bands. a whole new format, a big shakeup with these bands. Yes. Or a whole old format. It could be. <laughs> you know, it's popular decks that although affinity no in more the axe, affinity, yeah. Um, which had also later on kind of morphed into the um what's the card? Hardened scales. Of, the hardened scales deck. Yeah, so 
Would can it survive? I don't know. Frank Carson didn't seem to think so. <laughs> there is also the team series finals at yes. Magic Fest Austin. So the big teams, Ultimate Guard and Haruya Sword, battled it out in team draft of Theros Beyond Death. They actually forced a third draft, so teams each won their first groups of matches and had to play a third one. Haruya Sword came out on top there, won $100,000, and basically got revenge because these were essentially the same kind of two teams fighting each other. It was a different Haruya team than last year, but it was still Team Ultimate Guard. Yeah. Took them down after they won last year. Nice. Um, there was also a modern event in Knoxville. That was the Star City Games modern event. Um, congratulations to Erin Barrett. She took it down with a Yawgmoth deck. Yeah, this deck is uh, also kind of new and modern. Really cool combo with Yawgmoth and a bunch of undying creatures. Yeah. I played against it on Magic Online a few days ago, and I was like, what is this? This is silly. Look, Yawgmoth, look some undying creatures. And then I'm like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. Just kidding, I'm dead. <laughs> so it is the real deal. Yeah, and also second place in Knoxville was Mono Green Devotion. Cool. So wild. And then there were a bunch of Urza decks in there. So oh, of course. Don't, don't worry. As Urza do. was still represented. And is still oh, getting Urza. the axe. So updates here for Arena. If you're an Arena player, the January State of the Game was recently released. Uh, by the way, the early access stream for Theros Beyond Death is happening this Wednesday the 15th. We're going to be streaming yeah. in our office starting at 11 a.m. Central. So check us out on twitch.tv slash glhfmagic. Tons of streamers streaming on Wednesday. And then for everybody else, the set's going to drop on Thursday the 16th. This is the same day that Arena will, for the first time, be available in the Epic Games Store. Just nice. FYI. Um, um, there are some sorting updates. There are now first and new tags uh, when cards are added into your collection, plus favorite and last played uh, are sorting options for decks now, which is nice. You yeah. don't have to like make a new scroll, deck scroll, and then like scroll, 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 scroll. Yeah, that'll be really cool. <laughs> yes. There's also a historic challenge event this weekend. It is best of three with a high entry fee and then better prizes as yep. a result of that. They're going to be bringing back the brawl days event, if you remember this from December, where you paid 10 thousand gold to be able to play brawl as often as you wanted in your own queue uh they said hey half of players that are playing brawl played this so we're gonna do it again well i don't think most people are happy about this decision having to pay 10k gold to play brawl for a month um yeah. but there you go it'll be available again of course you can always challenge your friends with direct challenge and play brawl that way uh, for free yes in development is friends messaging. Yay! Which will be nice. I need to add some friends. Right now I have that little sad zero over in the oh, corner. Oh no, we're not even I friends. On. I know, <laughs> I need to really get on top of that. Mac OS is in concept. No, Ma Mac OS is in uh, in development. In development. And they said that after it was an Epic Game Store, that was when Mac OS was gonna come out. Oh my goodness. So it's just around the corner. I cannot wait. So yeah, next soonest uh, in we have concept. in concept. Which is cube drafting, friend deck sharing, eight person draft. Yes! Yes! And Pioneer. I'm so excited. And those last two things have been added very recently. <gasps> like we haven't heard them even talked about yet. And now they're being talked Yay! about. Actual eight person draft queues. Yay, real world draft. I'm so wow. excited. Oh. I really hope that it ends up being like leagues. I mean, I think yeah. there's definitely a place for doing real pods, but I don't care that much. If you no. have a league version, I don't I care. I just need to I be drafting need real with people. people. Yeah, oh, exactly. I can't bring myself to draft Throne of Eldraine right now. I know, I just, it's tough. It is so, it is such a rough way to do it's it. It's a different format. Arena. It's a different yeah. format. Um, you can now sign up, uh, is open for DreamHack Anaheim. Yeah, so this is a tournament that's open to anybody who wants to go. DreamHack is a conference or a con for uh, digital gaming, and a bunch of other games are going to have big tournaments there. Arena is one of them. It comes along with a $100,000 prize pool. Yeah. Capped at 350 players. You bring your own computer. You compete. It's going to be best of three standard, and it's going to be Swiss uh, play the entire time, meaning you play people on the same record as you, and then cuts to a top 16 for a playoff. Wow, that's so, pretty exciting. If you want to get into a big arena tournament, consider DreamHack in yeah. Anaheim. That's not many players for that prize pool. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty good. Pretty sweet. 30000 for first place. Um, there is now a one-page Theros story summary online. 
So there you go. There you go. That's the end of that update. I'll bring you the summary of it during our Theros story time on our full length podcast. A summary of a summary. If you don't want to read one page by yourself, <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> You can get it with my snarky commentary. <laughs> and the last big news update uh, is organized play changes got walked back recently. Yes. So Wizards had announced that you could, ch- you would, the first two Grand Prix you played would count player points towards rivals and MPL play. Yes. Even if you won the third tournament you played, why it would not count? Exactly. Their thinking was oh. they wanted to cut down on travel for players trying to grind and just be like, it's the first two, end of story. Yeah. And some weird emailing stuff going on in there which is just like that's got to yes. be suboptimal uh, so instead players did not like this change most notably Unsurprisingly. <laughs> a bunch of people actually were like oh crap I better go down to Austin to play modern this yes. weekend and then they walked it back Oh, Here's a right. statement from Wizards. This year, our team promised you stability, and we didn't deliver on that with yesterday's announcement. We are reverting that announcement. Grand Prix will not contribute to rivals or MPL qualification for the 2020 partial season. No word on 2021. Yeah. Our goal was to address the feedback from players that they wanted more opportunities for their results in tabletop, including Grand Prix to matter. We recognize that having players points awarded at Grand Prix count towards rivals MPL qualification causes other issues, most notably regional disparity of opportunity. Additionally, the timing of this announcement did not allow players to make informed decisions. We commit to having a dialogue with you over the next few months to address this issue for the 2020-2021 full season. Wow. All right. Wow. So whirlwind of stuff there. Yes. A roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that is all of your magic news for this week. Bye, everybody. Check us out on patreon.com slash glhfmagic or check out our full-length podcast, Good Luck High Five, anywhere fine podcasts are found. 